Hi, it's Anna Haferman. Today I'm going to show how to do Fair Isle on the LK150 and I'm going to be using a faster method of Fair Isle than is outlined in the manual. Uh, this one requires uh, just different settings on the carriage and I'm also going to be using the needle beetle to select stitches. I'm going to make myself a little cheat sheet and I'll show you how to do that and this method goes quickly and painlessly and I think you're going to like it. To start with, we want to do a couple things just to make it easier as we go along. And we're going to make a, what I'm going to call a cheat sheet. And we're going to work with an eight stitch pattern because we'll be using the needle beetle. And uh, this is going to help us select our pattern. This is made by Chris Crafter and I'll put a link in the description where you can get this. And so uh, we're using an eight stitch pattern. So we need to either draw our own or find one. And I'm going to find, I found mine, which is this one in this book, which is available online for free download. And I'll put a link for that too. So it's this pattern here. It's number 143. And uh, I'm going to do mine in uh, purple and pink. So, um, I'm going to copy that. And so what I'm going to do is go to the back here where it shows me a, uh, this is number 143 and it shows me a little uh, graph of what to copy. So I'm going to copy I'm, these bolder stitches are going to be my purple and the lighter ones are going to be my pink. And I see here it says uh, this is an eight stitch by 10 row pattern. So I'm going to draw that out onto a piece of graph paper. And so really all I, I'm going to do is make a little, uh, is make a little eight by 10 um, uh, chart on my graph paper. You could use, uh, you could do this on your computer or just kind of draw out a little grid. It's just eight by 10. So I'm just going to draw that out. So I've drawn out my little eight by 10 grid and now I'm going to number across the bottom here, one through, ten, one through eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to look here and copy the, these stitches with the yarn, the color that of the yarn that I want to knit those with. So I'm going to be using purple for that. And then uh, I will copy those and then I'll fill in the pinks, the other ones with a pink marker. So whatever color you have, you're using, whatever colors you're using, find uh, some markers that match. It doesn't have to be perfect, just enough that you can tell the difference. So copying from this, I will uh, fill in my little chart here. And so the first row is one and five. So I'm just gonna do one and five. And then the next one is also one and five. So I'm just drawing little dots to represent those stitches. And I'm just going to fill all of those in. So I have filled in all my dots for the back, uh, the contrast color. And I'm going to take the pink marker, uh, my pink yarn and fill in the rest of the dots. Any, any of the white ones I'm going to fill in with pink. So now I've drawn in all my dots and this is a visual representation of this and that's going to help me select my pattern and when I uh, knit it I'm going to this will repeat across the bed and then repeat vertically as well so the last thing I need to do and this is one more little cheat sheet thing is I'm going to go right up this column here and number starting with zero and then I'm going to go by two, four, six, 
8, 10, 16, 18. And however many, if I had a longer pattern, I would just continue to go up by 2. So this is going to correspond with our row counter when we are selecting the needles. So that's just going to help us pick out the pattern and the colors. Uh, the numbers will correspond with the first eight needles that we need to select using the needle beetle. And the colors are going to help us select it as well. So this whole thing is just going to help us. And this whole thing took me about four minutes to make and it's going to save me so much time while I'm doing my pattern. So to begin doing the Fair Isle, um, I've actually got some yarn already cast on, so um, you would do that however your pattern called for. Uh, I've got my row counter on zero, and then my carriage is set. Um, it's going to be set on hold on this side, so on the one here and the just triangle here. And then on this side, I'm on the circle and the two. These two levers are flipped to the back. These two are flipped forward. On the KX350, you would have N and H and uh, P and N. And it'll work exactly the same on the KX350. So I have my, um, contra my background color on the right, my contrast color on the left. And then I have my little chart where I can see it and refer to it because I'm going to be referring to it um, all the time. So, and then I have my needle beetle in position because I'm going to be selecting with that. Now with the needle beetle, I select on the first eight stitches, whatever pattern I want, and then it will repeat across the row. So what I'm going to do with these eight stitches, because I'm going to be using them over and over, I'm just going to number these needles right in front of the little groove there so I know which one. So now this is numbered 1 through 8, and th that corresponds to numbers 1 through 8 here. So um, for the first row, I am selecting the contrast colors. I look here, this is my row counter is on 0, and my row counter is going to correspond with this column here. So I look here and I start by selecting the contrast color needles, so the purple. So um, I pick out the purple dots on that row and that's one and five. One and five. And then I take the needle beetle and just select the stitches by going across the bed like that. And it selects it in pattern, it repeats it across the row. So now I have the pink yarn is um, what's in my carriage, and because it's on hold in this uh, on this side, it's going to knit these and hold over these, creating a little float over those. So then I um, got a nice good tension. Uh, knit to the left, and so I've got the first half of this first row done. So I've got the pink needles knit and then it floated over those purples. So when I'm on the left, I change color and park my pink yarn over on the right side and just thread my purple yarn on the left. And then because the needles are already selected and I'm in part over here, um, all I need to do is knit back. And what it'll do this time is it'll knit those needles and put a float over these. So that's exactly what happened there. And now I'm on, um, so I've completed this first row. Now I'm looking at this row here. I go to my uh, row counter chart. It says two. Well, it says two in my row counter. I go to the chart here. And because I have the purple threaded now, I'm going to choose the pink ones, which are 3, 4, and 5, 6, 7, and 8. So I go, uh, actually it's 2, 3, and 4, 6, 7, and 8. So I select those. 
Then I get the beetle and I knit a beetle across and it selected what I needed for that row. So now I'm in purple. It's going to knit these and hold or put a float over these. So I'll go across. Now that I'm on the left, all I need to do is change uh, color. And so then I've got my pink on this side. And now I just need to um, knit, knit across. And that will take care of my second row of knitting. So again, this is how I do it. I go, I go four, four, and I go pink. And so I choose purple here. I always choose the different color. So two, four, five, six, and eight. Two, four, five, six, eight. Then I get the needle beetle. Go across and then knit back. When I'm on the left, all I need to do is switch color. So when I'm over here on the left, I'm just taking the pink yarn out of the feeder and parking it on the other side under the, I actually just have it parked under this little thing here and pulling the, putting the purple in. I can't get this on camera to show you every time, but that's what I'm doing. I'm just switching the yarn and knit back. So I'm on the right again. I've, uh, my row counter says six. I look here and I've got purple in the feeder, which means I choose these pink ones. So one, two, and eight. One, two, and eight. And then beetle. Then knit. When I get to the left, I change color. And because my needles are selected, again, it's going to knit these ones that were floated the last time and float the ones that were knit the last time. So then I just knit across. So uh, this goes really fast once you get the hang of it. So really, when I'm on the right, all I have to do is go um, look at this number look at this color, pick the other color, which is four, five, six, uh, four, five, six, use the beetle, knit. When I'm on the left, I need to change color and knit back. So uh, I just keep doing that until I'm done with pattern. So now I'm on 18. This is going to be my last row of pattern. So I have purple here. So it means I select all, all of these and knit. And, uh, beetle. I keep saying knit, but it, I mean beetle. Change color and knit back. So now I look here, I'm on row 20. I don't even have a 20 there. That means I've finished my whole first set of patterning. So say I want to do another row. What I do, so I don't have to keep track of math, is reset my row counter to zero. I take my washable marker, just make a little mark on my row counter, which will tell me I've already done one uh, row of pattern. So then my row counter's at zero again, so I just start over. I have pink in the feeder like I did at the beginning, and I pick one and five again, and beetle, knit. And it's the same thing. I just keep going until I've got however many repeats I want. So um, I'm going to knit a few more repeats and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So I've done two repeats. I'm getting ready to finish my last row of my third repeat and you can do as many uh, repeats as you want. And I made a little mark each time I reset my row counter. And 
this is going to be my last one. There we go. Now I'm just going to knit some plain rows to uh, knit this off. So we can look at it. So uh, I'm just going to knit across and see what I get. Hope I didn't make any mistakes, and it looks like I didn't. So here's my um, here's my swatch, and you see these purple uh, pink hearts, purple whatever those are, purple diamonds. And it was relatively easy for a fairly uh, complex pattern. So if you like this video, try it out. Please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please ask in the comments.